Hi, welcome. I'm Michael Wielden. Thanks for being interested in my painting. Let's go for a walk through the garden and the house on the way to the studio so I can share with you my painting process from beginning to end. So here are some interior views of the inside of my 1910 California bungalow, fully restored. We will transition from here in the house to the studio, see how they relate to one another. This is black and white. My work uh, uh, starts with photographs that I take. I don't paint on location because I have too many um, alterations to make and too many additions and uh, uh, a, a very layered process that I can't do on location. It takes months. So this was a, uh, and I don't care really about the color of the photograph. So I, so I have this in black and white. And on this, I kind of put a grid, and I try to work with ideas about what the shapes are going to be and how they relate to the shapes in the format or in the photograph. So here are some of the shapes that I was thinking about for this particular photograph. And um, I, you can see there, there's quite a few. And let's see if I, oh yeah. You know, at one point I was thinking of this, and then I was thinking of that, and then, well, how about that, and that. And uh, ultimately I ended up with this idea, which I even modified further uh, when I actually had the form made and drew it out. So uh, that's the process that I go through. And then once I've done the drawing, I have um, the, the structures of the stretcher bars made by a friend of mine, Larry Word. So here are the forms. And they're on this rectangular format to relate to the photograph, the shape of the photograph that they came from, but then the transitions that I have made. And so they're very light, they're not hard. You can see they're actually made out of thin plywood. And then a wood surround has been glued to them so that to give them depth and strength and then these are covered with canvas. And so you can see how the drawing of the shapes relate to the uh, shapes that ultimately have been made. And I include these, these uh, spaces, these shapely spaces of, of the background so that um, uh, to suggest the layering of the paint and the, the phases that the painting goes through so that's, uh, that's how it is up to this point. And the next thing I'm going to do is wrap it in canvas and I'll show you that. Here I am stretching the canvas over the form. It's a bit complicated. Now it's done. 
So now I'm gessoing the canvas, getting it ready for paint. This is the finished canvas, all gessoed and in bas relief. You can see how it's in two pieces and how it's made. And now you can see it from the side. Okay, so here we have images of how the drawing develops into its completion. So here we go. I'm creating a red, and the reason I start with a red, at least in this case, is because based on black and white, which are the extremes of value, red is in the middle. It's about middle tone. And also red is active kind of like a red stoplight. It just it call, uh, grabs your attention and, and um, demands a response. So I like to put down something of that sort initially to um, excite, the, excite me and to demand uh, various uh, uh, other relationships as the painting goes on. So um, I usually start in the background or the ground and just I'm gonna you know strangely enough I'm gonna put this red over here in the corner now I'm working across the entire field with shapes of red after which I will continue with other colors until the color field is complete So when I come back to the painting the next time, it will be to add additional color layers approaching the final work. I'm starting the second layer of color to begin the layering process toward the final resolution of the painting. It consists of many layers of color. Hi, welcome back. It's been about a month since we were last together and I have finished the painting. So I wanna show it to you. Let's go back to the studio and take a look at what happened. Is that you can see that the colors in the ground are different. They are based upon the original colors that I put in the background, uh, slightly modified because the painting developed in a certain way. Now also, uh, all of those colors that you saw in the beginning are actually still present in the final painting, but more subtle. So you can see that the purples in the rocks were pretty much like the original purples from the very first layer of paint and the trail of those purples moves throughout as it did. Uh, here's some here, here's some purple shadows here, here's a purple rock here, then purple shadow down here, and moves all the way down to here uh, where the purple reaches the bottom. And it surfaces elsewhere in the painting. But so that is one of the th reasons why I start with color. I start with 
bold color because I want to be thinking about color the entire time that I'm painting. I'm not just thinking about the drawing in, in line and how to get it uh, realistic. I'm thinking about the field of color because that actually is what uh, uh, it is meant to be on the same level as the descriptiveness, the structures of the color. So as you look at the painting, you can actually see pieces of all of the colors all along the way as this painting was uh, uh, developed. And so the purpose of that is to see my mind at work and to see the process uh, as you're looking at it, you are also looking through it, and you're seeing it actually pieces from the very beginning manifesting in the surrounding space. So that's how that all came about. That's why I do it, and uh, I like the result. I hope you do too. Thanks. The end. The end. <laughs> <laughs>